Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some more Squarespace animations and effects that you can do. If you've never used code before, don't worry. I'm gonna try and make it as simple as possible in order for you to really utilize these effects in your website. So let's get started. First up, we have this glass panel effect. Now you'll see this effect on a lot of more modern websites in today's day and age, like tech websites and also software company websites will use this effect. But with that being said, I think that anyone can use this. And there's a lot of different ways that you can utilize this in a website. The first way that I'm going to teach you how to do this is just using the built-in text block within Squarespace. Now there are some limitations to this, which I will get into in just a second, but what you're going to do is just go ahead and add in your text. What you're going to do is click on that little paint bucket icon. That's going to allow you to have a background for your text block. And you can choose the color that you want. I personally think that having like a more see-through-ish gray color works the best for this because that would obviously give you that glass effect, but you can choose whatever color you would like. Now, what you're gonna do is click on blur and you're gonna see that that's going to automatically apply that. And what you're gonna do is you can either blur this a lot or just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just lower that opacity just a little bit more. Now, if you go to resize this, you'll see that now you have a nice glass effect. You can also edit your corner radius. So if you would like to have more rounded corners, you can go ahead and do that as well. And if you wanted to have a stroke around it, you could, I'm not going to for this, but you'll see right here that that does create a transparent um, element. You can go ahead and add in your text. The only thing is that you're a little bit limited to how you can style your text on this block because it's going to keep all of the text just within the same text box. Now you could go in and just add in another layer of text over this, but keep that in mind that it's going to be a little bit more limited on how you can style your text within that box. Okay, let me show you how to do this with a little bit of code. Personally, this is my favorite way to do this effect because I just find that it does look a little bit more realistic with the glass effect instead of just kind of having like a little bit of that blur effect on the text box. And also I find that it's a little bit easier to kind of layer text and move things around within in the element. So go ahead and add in a shape block. Now this shape block can be as big or as little as you would like. You can always resize it later on. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure that this is set to, again, a little bit of a see-through white color. That's really going to get you the best results for this. Now I am going to share the code down below for free that you can access. That way you can just copy and paste this directly into your account. But what you're gonna do is go ahead and copy that code. And then you're gonna go ahead into your custom code panel. Go to custom CSS and go ahead and just paste in that code. Now what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you have the Squarespace ID plugin on Google Chrome. The easiest way if you are gonna be utilizing code in your websites, it's just nice to have this extension because it allows you to find different block IDs a lot quicker. So once you have your plugin right here, just go ahead and click on that. That's gonna pop up with your block ID. Go ahead and just click it to copy it and then you can just go ahead and paste that directly into that effect. Now you'll see that this is going to already apply the effect what I need to do is actually go in and lower the opacity even more for this block element I'm gonna just drag this all the way down like so and then I'm gonna leave it and now you'll see that you have that nice glass block effect now the way that I like to do this is I like to um, turn off fill screen and then I'll have this as a split screen like so and then if you scroll up you'll see that you can layer text over it now if you wanted to change how much of a blur effect this has you'll go up here to where it says backdrop filter with the blur and you can raise this to whatever you would like to so if you wanted this to be 20 you'll see that that will automatically apply that effect to be more blurry um, and you can also lower that down if you wanted it to be less blurry you can do it like that next up we have a typewriter effect now this is a really cool effect to add into your websites in order to add some subtle animations and also just highlight some really important things that you want to highlight. All right, so go ahead and go into your Squarespace section that you want to add this effect into and hit add block and then scroll down to code. You're gonna go ahead and double click on this. That's gonna open up the code editor and then just go ahead and paste that code in. Like I mentioned, that code will be linked down below for you to access. So you can just copy and paste that. And then I'm gonna show you how to edit it. That way you can get the most out of it. All right, so once you have your code pasted directly into there, go ahead and click on preview and safe mode. This is going to allow you to preview what the effect is going to look like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just center that like that. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go over a couple things that you can edit within here. So first of all, you can edit your font size. So if you want it to be very, very large or a little bit smaller, you can go ahead and adjust that. 
right there. And you can also adjust what your font is. So you'll want to make sure that you are pasting or just typing in the exact name of how that font shows up within Squarespace. So I'm using instrument serif for this. So I'm going to just type in instrument serif exactly like so. If you have some discrepancies with your text name, it's not going to work. So just make sure that that is typed in correctly, how that shows. Now down here is where you can edit your cursor color as well as the text color. Now what you can do is you can paste in your hex color. That's the easiest way to do that. Um, so if you want to have your uh, cursor color be changed, you'll just edit this right here. And then if you want to change the color of your text, you'll just go ahead and edit that down there. Now, if you keep scrolling down, what you can do is change out what your typewriter effect says just by swapping out these lines of text. You want to make sure that you are keeping your text within those quotation marks in order to make that work. So if you wanted to change out any of these lines, you'll be able to do that. Now, if you wanted to have multiple lines of code, not just these three, you can always just copy and paste this. Just make sure that you put a comma after it like so in order for that effect to still work. Now, you can also change how fast your typing speed is as well as the erasing speed and then if you want to have a longer or shorter pause between any of those effects you can go ahead and edit that in there now another thing that's important to note is there will be a section down here where you can adjust your text size on mobile because obviously you do not want to have a very large um, typewriter effect on your mobile design so you'll see right here that this is still pretty large now what you can do is adjust your font size just down here so if you wanted to adjust this to 15 that may be a little bit too small, but you'll see that that will adjust it on your mobile device. One thing to keep in mind is that when you go back to preview this on the desktop, it is going to look small like this, but when you hit exit and then you go to actually preview this, you're going to see that that text is still the correct size. So that will allow you to edit on your mobile devices as well as the desktop in order to keep everything accessible and readable across all platforms. All right, next up we have a custom cursor. Now this is a really fun way to just add some personalization to your website and make it a little bit more unique. Now what you're gonna do is go ahead again, grab that line of code that I shared down below, go over into your custom CSS panel. What you're gonna do is go ahead and create the image that you want for your custom cursor. You do have to have it within a specific ratio, which I will put on the screen. That way you know what size it needs to be. Once you have that, go ahead and download that and save that to your computer and then go into your custom files right here and then click on add images and fonts. Click on custom files again and then just click on that image like so. That's going to add in that URL and then when you hover over onto your editor, you're gonna go ahead and see that custom cursor already loaded and ready to go. Now you have a cute, fun little custom cursor. So again, you can get really creative with this and it's super easy to do. Next up, we have a image rotating on scroll. Also, I don't know, I'm kind of hungry right now. and That's why I'm like going off of this like breakfast vibe, but basically um, you can apply this effect to any sort of image or element on your website. And it basically is triggered by scrolling. So when you scroll on your page, that image will rotate so let me show you how to do that so once you're on your section of your website go ahead and add in a code block so you're gonna go ahead and add your code block and double click on that again and then just go ahead and paste in that code that I shared again below and what you're gonna want to do is you're going to want to swap out this block ID so like I showed you earlier make sure that you have that Squarespace ID block finder that's going to make this the most easiest for you to do now what you're going to want to do is also go ahead and add in your image that you intend to have as the scrolling element so go ahead and upload your file you can move that to wherever you want to have that on your website and what you're going to do is go up into your extensions again click on that id finder and then you're going to go ahead and copy that image block id go back into your code and then what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and replace this line with that block ID. So go ahead and exit out. You can go ahead and save that. And then when you go to preview that over here and you start scrolling, that will automatically apply that effect. Now, if you wanted to edit how fast this is scrolling, you can go ahead and adjust that right here. So if you wanted to adjust that to five and then we're gonna go ahead and preview that, you'll see that that goes a little bit slower. So the lower the number is, the faster it'll rotate, the higher it is, the slower it'll rotate. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you like this video and you found it helpful, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe. I'm gonna be posting a lot of videos about Show It in Squarespace and web design on this channel. So make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss any videos. And if you have any questions or if you want to see specific videos, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video.